Hello everyone and welcome to the first video of the new series on game making with Unity. We're going to start this series by talking about Unity first, what it is, what it does, and why I use it at all. Even if you're already familiar with Unity, don't rush to close this video as there might be something that will help you improve your understanding of the subject. Alright, so first of all, Unity is a game engine. A game engine is simply put an app that provides core functionality common to all games, enabling you as a game developer to focus on the fun part of your game instead of spending hours trying to implement that basic functionality on your own. A game engine also provides an interface to access that core functionality. While this might seem obvious and taken for granted, if you imagine making your entire game in a code editor, you will probably stop taking graphical user interface for granted. Remember how NetBeans has design mode where you can create user interface using drag and drop and NetBeans would automatically generate code for that. Unity does pretty much the same but on a greater scale. Game engines also help you build your games to various platforms. Remember the video on compilation and interpretation? To have a game run, for example, on Android devices, we need to compile it for Android. But a game compiled for Android will not run on an iOS device or a Mac. To make things even worse, native Android development is done in Android Studio using Kotlin or Java, while native iOS and Mac development are done in Xcode in the Swift or Objective-C languages. A game engine like Unity allows you to create a game once and build it for multiple platforms without rewriting the code or switching IDEs. Well, for the most part, unfortunately. Alright, now that we know that a game engine is a tool that makes it easier for you to create games and build those games to multiple platforms, let's talk a bit more about that core functionality that game engines in general and Unity in particular provide. Perhaps the most important part is rendering. Rendering is basically drawing stuff on the screen. Since most games involve displaying constantly changing images on the screen, the fact that Unity handles rendering for you makes it super helpful. Remember how in the Tetris video series we had to write code for drawing static and moving Tetris blocks? Well, Unity would handle that for us. Pretty handy, isn't it? Unity can handle more complex rendering than just drawing Tetris blocks on the screen though. Unity is a 3D engine, meaning in addition to the X and Y dimensions, it supports a third, the Z dimension. To explain why this adds an additional layer of complexity, let's look at this example, where two identical objects are placed at different distances from the screen. If you ignore the z-coordinate, then both objects will be rendered equally large. However, if you render those objects with a z-coordinate in mind, then the object that is farther away from the screen will be rendered smaller than the one that's closer to the screen. This is just an example and a rather simple one of the rendering job that game engines do for you. Another example of what game engines do is physics simulation. If you drop an object, that object will accelerate towards the ground at 9.8 meters per second squared because of the gravity. Without a game engine, we would have to do the math on our own, which isn't a big deal, unless you have hundreds of objects that not just fall down, but also, for example, collide with one another. This is where game engines really help. All right, so now we know that Unity is a game engine. We also have a general idea as to what game engines do. So the question is what other game engines there are and why choose Unity? The short answer is just because why not? Seriously though, we chose Unity because, well, we've been working with it for a while even before the idea of this YouTube channel came into existence, so we're just used to it. But even if you're a beginner in game making and haven't invested much of your time into any particular game engine, we would still recommend Unity, and here's why. If you look at the Wikipedia list of existing game engines, your head might go spinning due to the number of those. But if you do additional googling, your options will pretty quickly narrow down to three candidates. Unity, Unreal, and Godot. Note that I'm not talking about pure 2D game engines, and I personally don't think it's a good idea to bind yourself to 2D games only, even if you're planning to start off by making a simple 2D game. So the three engines mentioned above, Unity, Unreal, and Godot, all support both 2D and 3D. All three allow you to make relatively simple behavior games without writing code by using visual scripting, like what we did in the Scratch video series. In terms of learning curve, I personally would say that Godot is the easiest one to get started with, while Unreal is the most difficult one, with Unity being somewhere in between, which is one reason why we chose Unity. If you look at their rendering potential, Unreal Engine provides the best looking AAA level graphics. Godot is nowhere near and despite its actively grown popularity might never get there, being an open source project. More on this a bit later. Unity again is somewhere in between. It can output very good graphics, but that generally takes some extra work to do compared to Unreal. Now, some of you might say, why get hung up on AAA graphics from the start? The answer is, we don't. And it's not really about AAA graphics, it's about long-term potential. We believe that since Unity has a more beginner-friendly learning curve than Unreal, 
and since it has a good potential to become as good as Unreal in the future, it seems to be a good choice to invest your time in learning Unity, as opposed to Godot, at least at this very moment. Next, out of the three, only Godot is open source. There are people, and you might be one of them, who believe in and actively support open source software. And there's nothing wrong with that. We all have preferences and beliefs. However, I'm very skeptical about open source, and speaking exclusively from my own experience, I've had fewer issues and overall better user experience working with proprietary software. So I personally wouldn't choose Godot over Unity just because the former is open source, which some of you might rightfully call biased. But this is my personal opinion, and here I'm not really trying to convince you that Unity is a perfect choice. In fact, just like any other software, Unity is not perfect. It has issues, some of which are extremely frustrating, but the main purpose of this brief game engine comparison is rather to give you a general idea as to why, despite all the issues, we chose Unity as our game engine, and why we're using it for this video series. Now, programming for Unity is done in the c -sharp language, and some of you might reasonably point out that a large chunk of the content in this channel is on Java. How do we transition to c -sharp? Some of you might also get surprised to know that even though we use c -sharp to write code for Unity, Unity itself is a C++, not a C-sharp engine, and that we will talk about in more detail in the next video. So stay tuned, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.